Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, please welcome to the uh, February 5th legislative session. Please turn off all cell phones or silence them and electronic devices. And everyone, please rise for the moment of silence and pledge your flag. Stockis, Benton, Kirkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Hines, Hemnitz, Kulasek, Padoop, Ruskevich, Simmons, Sullivan, Turnbull, Bureau, Huang, Brescia. 20, President, one absent. Okay, before we go to public participation, uh, we've got two proclamations, one for Archie De DeWolford Bellinger Jr., and I'd like to invite up his family, John, Mark, Eric, Alice, uh, Airport Director of Aviation, Ed Magrita, and Bill Kelly, Chairman of the Airport Advisory Board, and Anne Marie Kelly as well. And also Jeff Berkman, legislator from Middletown, from when Archie was. say a few words first or on behalf of uh, Orange County and the airport I uh, wanted to just note how important it is to honor uh, the significant members that brought the airport to what it is and um, Archie was a very instrumental part of the growth of the airport and the state-of-the-art facility that it is today so it's an honor to be here and it's an honor to note his support and his tireless efforts, albeit voluntary, it's voluntary effort and the amount of time that he put in is extremely noteworthy. So thank you, Mrs. Felenzer and the Felenzer family and uh, it's great to be here to honor. Bill, did you want to say a few words? Or? Never been short of words before. So. I'd like to say that uh, in regard to the founders of family here today, it's a privilege to be able to honor them for the work that Archie uh, has done. I met Archie 55 years ago when he was an engineer for an O&R, and I was an engineer for St. Hudson. And since then, professionally, we've stayed in contact with different jobs together and customers that I had needed to have the assistance of a professional. Archie never let us down, never let his customers down. And I have the highest regard for him, and it's been a pleasure serving on the uh, board with him. Uh, great ideas, great insight, and also know, of course, we knew. My wife go back a long time for a bunch of other things, but <clears throat> working with uh, the Three children, I'll say, of uh, Archie. It's been a real pleasure. And I've got a couple of them pretty well anyway. And uh, I just want to say that the thing would be done for the county professionally also in doing design work for many facilities for the county here and there. And uh, I never heard of on any of the work that he had ever done. And it's a pleasure. Uh, I miss him very much, and uh, I think what we're doing here today is very appropriate. Thank you, Bill. Uh, Jeff 
Berkman, your home le town legislator, would like to say a few words. I guess you were his teacher way back in the day. <laughs> yeah, I hope you taught him some good things. Okay. It was kindergarten. kindergarten. So the, the lessons were less complicated, right? Stepped on my line. <laughs> uh, Archie was an outstanding community, and I'm proud to know him. And uh, you know, the strength of our communities based on the strength of its citizens. And when I think of Archie, I think of an outstanding citizen. And I know he's proud of all of you because you're an outstanding family. So thank you for being my teacher. And thank you for all the contributions that your family and Archie have made and the ones that you'll continue to make. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, I'd like to invite up the county exec too. I don't know if you want us to read this proclamation. It's pretty long. Maybe we can... it's okay. We know about Archie's accomplishments. There's many in very. Usually he makes me read them, so it's. Uh, uh, but I'm honored to be here. Uh, I've known the Felsinger family for a long time, and um, great, great uh, family. I was really honored uh, um, last year that the Scouts was a were able to honor Archie. And it, was, it couldn't have been perfect timing. Um, I, I think, Mark, you made that happen, or somebody did in your family, and they did it at the right timing. And we had a great evening together. I think it was a, a wonderful uh, uh, tribute and a, a wonderful testimony to a great man uh, who did so much for a community. People are talking engineering contributions, but what he did for scouting, a uh, military uh, retired officer. Uh, which he enjoyed doing that. So I know Ed is, uh, you know, obviously happy about that as well as with the family. So uh, he couldn't have been a happier guy. I've never met somebody that was always so positive and happy. And, uh, you know, up until the end, I remember, and I might be talking too much about this, Mark, but uh, the routine that he had, that he still went out and hung out and did his thing up until right to the end. And uh, uh, I'm proud to be standing here today uh, echoing what my colleagues and the families and friends have said, uh, just such a great man. So thank you very much. I'll just echo what the county exec just said. I mean, Archie was involved with so many different things, whether it was the airport, the scouting, uh, the Citizens Foundation, you name it. He was an altruistic individual, uh, definitely a gentleman and a scholar. And uh, he's sorely missed, Alice, he really is. Um, I remember reading the obituary. What was it he said when he dropped the kids off at school? Another day in which to excel. Another day in which to excel. <laughs> remember that, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I will read the last resolved, resolve, or the second to last. It says, resolved that we, the Orange County Legislature, do here, hereby formally memorialize our profound sentiments on the occasion of the passing of Archie DeWilford Bellinger, Jr on behalf of ourselves and all the people of the County of Orange to whose interest and services he was so dedicated. So thank you for, for doing this for us and doing this for our family here. Um, we very much appreciate it. I would say the one thing Archie really believed in was the County of Orange. I think we're, I think he was third generation Orange County, fourth, and we have some children and grandchildren, so fifth and sixth generation uh, Orange County people. Um, if it wasn't the airport that he believed in in transportation, it was the uh, ski hill out there. We did the electrical design out there. He was a ski patrolman out there. Obviously, we mentioned the Boy Scouting, his military service, but he was a true believer in that saying, every day in which to excel. Um, and he was a true believer of this county, and, and I think it shows, and I really appreciate him being recognized here by you folks. Um, can't, can't be more pleased and can't be more honored to, to be here in front of everybody um, witnessing this and being a part of this. And thank you for recognizing him and, and for everybody at the airport. Um, very much appreciate it. Thank you. I was remiss in not mentioning that Archie and your family did the mechanical engineering on Brescia Lumber back in 1989, and it was, it was a fantastic job. I, I wish it was still there, to be honest. <laughs> okay, I'd like to invite up Ida Marshall, and I would like to invite down legislator Katie Benelli, 
and Jeff Berkman present the proclamation. Ida is turning, or turned 100 years old, I guess. Oh, next week? Okay, the 15th. I have the honor of going first. You are a vibrant, alive, energetic individual, and you've passed that gene right on to your whole family. I, when you go through these pro proclamations and citations, you know, you try to get a snapshot of who the person is, and you can't put everything in, so I thought I'd add a couple. Isn't it true that you danced with Cab Calloway at the Cotton Club? Wow. That's what I heard. That's what I heard. <laughs> and for baseball fans, I heard that you were at Yankee Stadium and watched Babe Ruth. Yankee Come on. Anyway, it's my honor to participate honoring you on your 100th birthday, and you come from a great family. And Rochelle, I didn't even make some comment about driving on other occasions, but I had to say at least that much. Just an inside joke, folks. Congratulations, I hope you go for 120. Again, I'm honored to be here today as well. I, uh, I'm going to stay away from the Cab Calloway, and uh, but I will say, and I was—I thought you were going to steal my thunder, uh, Jeff. Uh, the contributions you made to not only this county and this country, but with I think the only democratic bastion of hope right now in a very unstable world in the Middle East. Um, I, if people who don't know it in the audience, if you haven't heard. Um, Ida had uh, raised money not only for the Zion Estate, but for the IDF, uh, one of our biggest allies right now in, in the world. So uh, when you think about, so I want to shake your hand for that alone, Ida. Um, when you think about what's going on here and the concerns in the public and the instability in the world, um, you've helped back one up. And uh, obviously, you're a young lady. Uh, you helped them out in their infancy, too. It's a young state over there. So I want to thank you on behalf of uh, the residents of Orange County for that. And you're still working. Your birthday is next week. And uh, we really wish you the best. And Jeff said another 20 years. I'm hoping it's another 30, 40 years. So, uh, so thank you very much. And God bless you. Appreciate it. I'd, I'd like to thank Katie Benelli for asking you to come in to celebrate your pre-birthday, I guess, here today. And I forgot to recognize your daughter, Rochelle Marshall, and your grandson, Jeff Levine. Once again, I wish you a happy birthday. And somebody said you, were, you drove up until a week or two ago? You were driving up until a week or two ago? A few weeks ago, wow. You could have been on that Super Bowl Dodge commercial if you played your cards right. <laughs> Thank you very much, and good afternoon to everybody as we celebrate Ida Marshall here in Orange County. Um, it's my pleasure to stand before you. Uh, all too often we have the opportunity to pause and give recognition to a member of our community, and I don't see anything more fitting than somebody that's going to be celebrating their 100th birthday next Saturday. So I congratulate you on that. I congratulate your family for bringing this to our attention and allowing us to be part of this. And uh, just to follow up a little bit on Jeff's statement in regard to uh, Babe Ruth, Babe Ruth, in his first home run the year you were born. Unfortunately for those of us that are Yankee fans, it was for the Boston Red Sox. <laughs> so, I mean, you've seen a lot of different changes in your life, and I know when I brought this attention to our staff, they said that they couldn't wait to meet you, so we really are very thrilled that you're here, and I'd like to recognize who I knew was a surprise guest for you today, but your great granddaughter, Emily. Thank you for coming, Emily. And this is a proclamation of the Orange County Legislature and the Orange County Executive recognizing and honoring Ida Marshall on the occasion of her 100th birthday. 
whereas Ida Marshall was born on February 15, 1915, and is a resident of Blueing Grove, a 40-year resident of Orange County, she began her working career in a millinery shop and is still employed today here in Orange County at a yarn fabric company. Whereas Ida Marshall has been recognized and appreciated for her dedication and volunteerism and has received awards for service to the Israeli Defense Force, State of Israel Bonds, and the Jewish Federation of Orange County as a volunteer of the year. She is still an active member of Hadassah Zionist Women's Organization and Temple I Time, did I say that? A Time. <laughs> Jeff was trying to coach me with that one. <laughs> Whereas longevity of life is a blessing for an individual and for a community, which benefits from the wisdom, creativity, and experience this individual brings to all. Whereas Orange County recognizes the contribution of senior citizens to our community and the important role they serve in our society. Now, for be it, now therefore be it resolved that we as the Orange County Legislature and the Orange County Executive do hereby extend our best wishes to Ida Marshall on the occasion of her 100th birthday with sincere congratulations and in many more happy and productive years. Ida, congratulations. <laughs> and come to congratulate me. Thank you so much. Can I go? <laughs> the only thing I want to say is when I told my mother that she was coming here, she said, I didn't do anything. <laughs> because I tell her every day, inhale, and it's working. That's the secret. And Ida, Ida, in your honor today, I'd like the minutes, the official minutes, to record this last statement. Am Yisrael Chai. Uh, Chairman Brescia and I wanted to mention one thing. Uh, we didn't know you were going to be here today, Ed Magrita, but if you mind standing up for a second. Uh, Ed Magrita runs our airport in uh, Montgomery, but uh, this past Sunday marked his last day of service to the uh, United States military. He started off as a pilot, I think, when they were biplanes, and uh, he ended up leaving when they were P-3. Uh, Dennis Simmons and I got to know him over the years, uh, flew the P-3 Orion, right? And uh, how many, 29 years? 29 years of service to the military, so we want to make sure we uh, mention that, right, Steve? Thank you. Thank you for your service. And no speakers before the session? And I neglected to um, mention that Curly Dillard has an excused absence. So, uh, minority le or majority leader Bonasek. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move to approve the minutes of November 6, 2014. All in favor? Carried. Uh, majority leader Bonasek again. Thank you. I move to vote collectively on item number 17, 18, and 19. Okay, if there are no objections, the objections, these items will be voted on collectively. Are there any referrals, consents, or withdrawals? Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, I request that item number 7 on the agenda, resolution authorizing the county executive of Orange County to sign a renewal sales tax agreement with the cities of Newburgh, Milltown, and Port Jervis be withdrawn from the agenda. That's item number seven. Second. Okay, the sponsors were okay with that too, right? Okay, so granted. Good. All right, we're ready to roll here. Um, 
What did I miss? Oh, I didn't go to the, I'm sorry. Yeah, I had the paper folder here, okay. Okay, Lee. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I request that number 13, uh, item number 13 on the agenda, the bond resolution authorizing rehabilitation improvements to the Glenmere Lake Dam located in the towns of Warwick and Chester, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is $3,325,000, appropriating $3,325,000. I'm reading what the replacement item says, Mr. the one I'm withdrawing. Oh, let me finish. Okay. Appropriating three million, therefore in addition to the 325,000 previously appropriated. Authorizing the issuance of one million bonds of the county to finance a portion of said additional appropriation and authorizing the expenditure of one million dollars expected to be received from the town of Chester and one million expected to be received from the village of Florida towards the cost thereof or redemption of the bonds or notes issued therefore, or to be budgeted as an offset to the taxes for the payment of principal and interest on said bonds or notes, be withdrawn from the agenda and replaced with replacement bond resolution. Second. Okay. Any objections? So 13 is withdrawn. New 13 is in, in, is in its place. Okay. All right, uh, A referred to all legislators, B referred to all legislators, and AA is referred to all legislators. Um, resolution number one. Legislators Benton and Nagastakis, resolution authorizing the County of Orange to vacate a decision of the Supreme Court regarding an in rem foreclosure pursuant to Section 5, Paragraph B1 of Local Law 2 of 2010. Second. Question? Roll call. Anasek? Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Yes. Benelli? Cheney? DeSalvo? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulasek? Paduk? Ruskevich, Simmons, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vero, Wong, Gresham. 20 ayes. Okay, resolution two. Legislators Benton and DeSalvo, resolution authorizing the county executive to enter into an agreement with certain Orange County municipalities, providing for the exemption from county taxation of lands owned and used by them for water supply and related purposes pursuant to section 4063 of real property tax law. Second. Well, your name added it. Okay. Dennis Simmons. Okay. Legislator Berkman as well. Okay. Roll call. Bonasek, Ekis, Amo, Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Bentinelli, Cheney, DeSalvo, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Simmons, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vero, Wong, and Brescia. 20 ayes. Okay, resolution number three. Legislators Benton and Kulasek. Resolution authorizing the private sale and conveyance of certain county owned lands acquired by reason of a failure to redeem said lands from a tax sale to Orange County pursuant to section 10184 of the real property tax law and Orange County amended local law number two of 2010. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek, Ekis, yes. Amo, yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, DeSalvo, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Simmons, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vero, Wong, and Brescia. 20 eyes. Resolution four. Legislators Benton and Benelli, resolution approving the release of the county's interest in and to a certain deed sale parcel to the previous owner of record pursuant to section five, paragraph B1 of local law number two of 2010. Second. Discussion, roll call. Bonasek, Ekis, yes. Amo, yes. Nagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, DeSalvo, 
Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, Padue, Ruskevich, Simmons, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vero, Wong, and Brescia. 20 ayes. Yes. Legislator Simmons. Okay, resolution five. Legislators Hines and Benelli, resolution authorizing the private sale and conveyance of certain county owned lands acquired by reason of a failure to redeem said lands from a tax sale to Orange County pursuant to section 1136 of the real property tax law and section five paragraph A1 of the Orange County amended local law number two of 2010. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, DeSalvo, Ekis, I'm sorry, <laughs> Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, Padue, Ruskevich, Simmons, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vera, Wong, and Brescia, 20 ayes. A okay, resolution number six. Legislators Benton and Berkman, resolution authorizing the county executive of Orange County to sign the renewal sales agreement with the cities of Newburgh, Middletown, and Port Jervis. Second. Discussion? Mr. Chairman, Absolutely. Yes. Yes, Melissa, Myrna, Jim, Shannon, Michael Amo, Michael Paduke. Is there anybody that doesn't want to be added? To Barry, you don't want to be added? I, I have to recuse myself. On this one. Oh, okay. I think I'm going to recuse myself too. Because of my position with the Village of Warwick. And mine with the Village of Montgomery. Even though we didn't negotiate the contract. Okay. Jeff, you want to speak to him? Fixed, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> I'm okay. Next year's budget, I swear. Right? Uh, this is crazy having bad mics. But uh, there's nothing more important, as I said in the Ways and Means Committee, and I've said on many other occasions. Nothing more important, uh, you know, as a county legislator, uh, than to support the sales tax split with the three cities and my district specifically for me, which is Middletown. So I appreciate the support that uh, my amendment received inside. The Means Committee, which continued the split, if there's ever additional sales tax revenue, it would be along the same percentages that currently exists. So uh, I'd like to thank everyone involved in, in helping my community and doing the right thing by Orange County. It was a good time for the Democrats to support the amendment and for all of us as a legislature to stand up for local governments. I will say that the Association of Towns and Villages endorsed this overwhelmingly as well. Legislator Simmons. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I concur with my Democratic colleague, but I don't believe it's a partisan issue, obviously. It's something that uh, crosses all boundaries, and that's why I withdrew the uh, number seven, because I thought that the modifications and the amendments that actually were made to it were, were, were right on, and we support that. I want to thank you for being aware of that and making it happen. But uh, probably my municipality, being one of the poorest in the county, actually relies on this more than, than most. And I'm here to say that I'm very thankful that uh, we provide that, that help to the three cities that actually have more services that they actually provide than, than municipalities. And, sometimes need a little bit more support. So thank you very much, and I will be supporting you. Okay, roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Salvo? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? Paduke? Ruskevich, Simmons, <coughs> Sullivan, Turnbull, Firo, Wong, 
Correction. Abstain. Ayes, two abstentions. A resolution number eight. Legislators Hines and Dillard, resolution of the Orange County Legislature urging the Gaming Facility Location Board to include Orange County in the 2015 request for application process for license approval and operation of a casino in Orange County. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Oh, Legislator Amo. Hey, Mr. Chairman, um, I, I think it's good and I'd support it, but I think we made a mistake from what the gaming committee said in the, from the bottom, it's in fact, I guess it's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninth, whereas in our discussion, we said that we were focusing specific on the Newburgh area. And that last half of that sentence, given this county's and prospective local communities meet governing guard criteria for the selection process of dist distressed region, I think we clearly said we were only talking about the Newburgh area. And I think that particular uh, connection adds other, uh, that particular after the language after the comma suggests there may be more. And I don't think that was our intention. To whereas is down, it says the city of Newburgh. Does that cover Yeah, it? that's what I'm saying. If I would amend that, I'd recommend we just scratch, given in that, that whereas after the comma, given that this county all the way through region and it just stop there and go ahead with Newburgh. Because I think that's what we're really only we're talking about was Newburgh. You want to strike Newburgh out of it? No, no. The, okay. the, whereas number nine, I think, is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. After the comma, just scratch out from the word given to the end of that that whereas, and then continue on. That would be my amendment, just so that we make it clear we're talking about just the Newburgh area. Okay. Okay. Um, all in favor of the amendment? Aye. Okay. Barry, no? Okay. Carried. Okay, now on the resolution, you ready for roll call? Roll call. Osik? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? No. Salvo? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? Paduk? Ruskevich? Simmons? Sullivan? Turnbull? No. Hero? Wong? Gresham? 17 ayes, 3 noes. Okay, resolution number 9. Legislators Simmons, Amo, Berkman, Bonasek, Benelli, Hines, Pulisek, and Chemnitz. Resolution recognizing February as Black History Awareness Month. Second. Uh, Majority Leader Bonasek? Definitely. Same thing with the Democratic Caucus. And Michael? He's on. Yep. Okay, everybody's on it. Good. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? DeSalvo? Ekis? I'm sorry. Hines? Chemnitz? Kulistek? Badu? Kriskevich? Simmons? Sullivan? Turnbull? Vero? Wong? And Brescia? 20 eyes. Okay, resol resolution number 10. Legislators Bonasek, Vesalvo, Ruskevich, and Kulisek. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature making a determination under the State Environmental Quality Review Act seeker with respect to the proposed amendments, Agriculture and Farmland Protection Plan to the Orange County Comprehensive Plan. Discussion? Yeah. Roll. Oh. Barry, you want to be added? Okay. Roll. Roll. Shannon wants to be added too? Okay, roll call. Bonasek, yes. Ekis, yes. Amo, yes. Nagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, DeSalvo, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Simmons, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vero, Wong, Brescia. 20 ayes. Okay, resolution number 11. Legislators Bonasek, DeSalvo, Ekis, and Kulisek. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature adopting amendments to the Orange, Orange County Comprehensive Master Plan, Agricultural and Farmland Protection Plan for Orange County, pursuant to Section 9.02 of the Orange County Administrative Code. I, I just have a comment. Uh, before the meeting, everyone was given an email that I received this afternoon from uh, Commissioner uh, David Church uh, regarding a uh, 
a change uh, to the text of the document. It was uh, recommended by the New York State and Ag Markets uh, Department uh, that we note in the document itself uh, that the town of Wallkill uh, has completed and adopted an agricultural and farmland protection plan in 2012. Um, and they would like us to include that information in the plan. Uh, Mr. Church has agreed to do that uh, and believes that uh, it, it belongs in the plan. And so that when you read the resolution, the one, two, three, Yes, the third, whereas uh, it's changed to read testimony and written comments were reviewed by the planning department staff, the Agricultural and Farmland Protection Board, as well as the planning board and considered by this legislature prior to the adoption of the proposed amendments. That's the change to the document itself, as well as a uh, change to this resolution. Okay, roll call. All right, uh, Paul. Yes. Yes. Go ahead, there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just wanted to recognize the uh, uh, diligent work of the Orange County Planning Department um, in preparing this document, and with the support and active involvement of both the Orange County Planning Board and the Orange County Agricultural and Farmland Protection Board. Uh, this process uh, took time, um, but it came, it resulted in a, in a very good document and, and one uh, I'm proud to support. Thank you. Roll call. Anasek? Yes. Ikes? Yes. Amo? Yes. Benagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Yes. Cheney? Nisalvo? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulasek? Paduk? Ruskevich? Simmons? Sullivan? Turnbull? Vera? Wong? And Brescia? 20 eyes. <laughs> Okay, number 12 is a bond resolution requiring two-thirds vote. Legislators DeSalvo, Simmons, Hines, and Turnbull. Bond resolution dated February 5th, 2015. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing partial reconstruction of the Orange County Jail, located in the town of Ocean, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 10925 appropriating the set amount, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 10925 Bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ikes? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? No. Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? DeSalvo? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulasek? Paduk? Ruskevich? Simmons? Sullivan? Turnbull? Bureau, Wong, Russia. 19 ayes, 1 no. Okay, number 13, also a bond resolution requiring two thirds vote. Legislators Cheney, Venton, and DeSalvo. Bond resolution dated February 5th, 2015. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing rehabilitation improvements to the Glenmere Lake Dam, located in the towns of Warwick and Chester, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 3300000 appropriating 2975 therefore, in addition to the 325 previously appropriated, authorizing the issuance of 775 bonds of the county to finance a portion of said additional appropriation, and authorizing the expenditure of 1100 expected to be received from the town of Chester, and 1100 expected to be received from the village of Florida, towards the cost thereof, or redemption of the bonds or notes issued therefore or to be budgeted as an offset to the taxes for the payment of principal and interest on said bonds or notes. Second. Discussion? Paul? Yeah, my name. Yes. Jeff, same thing? No. Oh, okay. I see that there's a change, and I appreciate the change with the replacement, which makes it uh, better, but it still doesn't address a concern I have of, of towns being on record as accepting their portion. It says you know, somewhere that we expect those towns to pay, but it doesn't say that the towns will. It doesn't say what the, what the towns are going to do. So I think that's a problem. Yes, this afternoon I uh, received the, uh, order, uh, of the, uh, the order from the DEC, and, which sets forth the uh, compliance schedule for all three municipalities for repair of the uh, dam. And uh, in that document, it requires that all 
uh, three parties are jointly and separately liable for the responsibilities for the repair. So that's the, um, that is a DEC order for the repair and for compliance uh, and for uh, everyone to share in the cost. Uh, so uh, the uh, law department is, uh, has drafted the intermunicipal agreement uh, for signature by all three parties. Of course, at this point, it's not yet signed by all of the municipalities. And uh, I, I believe, as the county attorney had mentioned, uh, we do have other recourse in the event they do not uh, pay their respective costs uh, through uh, either uh, bringing uh, legal or uh, pursuant to the sales tax agreement, uh, holding off on uh, payment of the, uh, their sales tax amount that's uh, due under the, uh, uh, the uh, consent order. Um, it's hard to believe, but I guess I have to thank the DEC for that. Um, but I, the only thing, again, that I think is in question, which uh, Mr. Berkman brought up, is the length of time. Uh, we are putting forward this bond and this money, and um, we're worried about when reimbursement will happen. And, of course, that's just right out of the box because we found out that we already spent $127,000 on engineering. And 146, thank you. And uh, we're, you know, we haven't been reimbursed for that yet. So uh, again, I would like to see, I believe as Mr. Berkman would, an actual contract of agreement with length of time in there and so on, uh, so that it's done in an appropriate manner. And Before Lee goes, this, we're under the gun with this. I think this has to be completed, substantially completed by December of 2015. So I don't think we have that luxury to wait for the contract. I mean, I, I feel fine that we have the, the hammer, whether it's a sales tax or litigation, to get our money. We're going to get our money, our money, not our money, the, the rest of the county taxpayers outside of Florida and Chester, one way or the other, we're going to get it. I feel very confident with that. But I don't, want to, I don't want to get another fine from DEC, which the three of us are going to be, three municipalities are going to be responsible for. Lee? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I was going to say that time is of the essence. Uh, the law department is trying to prepare us and get everything done so that I think it's April 1st or April 15th, whatever the DEC scheduled get your shovels in the ground and get started date is so that we're ready, everything is ready to go. As soon as we get the final approval of the plan from the DEC, which obviously will have to be before their own drop dead date, then Langdon and the law department will be able to get the IMA signed. Uh, but again, uh, we are under the gun. We need to get this started. We are ordered to get this started, and we are ordered to get it finished, by, finished, I believe, not just substantially, but completely by December 31st. I think you're right. I stand corrected. Uh, Legislator Bureau? I asked a question in committee uh, in regard to 146,000 engineering costs. The village of Florida and the town of Chester, uh, me, they haven't even been billed yet. They haven't been invoiced. So, I mean, the question is, you haven't been reimbursed yet. They haven't even been billed. That, yes, post-haste. <laughs> okay, Legislator Simmons, you want to say something? Just that I share the concerns of uh, the people who have already spoken as to reimbursement, but I also agree with the chairman that I think we actually have the ultimate hammer when it comes to the uh, sharing of the sales tax revenue. And... Uh, you know, we could we could make sure that they don't get their monies out of sales tax uh, until we're reimbursed. I don't think that's an issue. I mean, it's an ultimate hammer to make sure that you know we are taken care of. So I'm willing to let it go at this point. Well, I mean, that's true, right? We can't hold the sales tax legally. Yeah. So there's our hammer right there. Okay. Any other questions, uh, legislator? Uh, let me go to Paul first, and you, Jay. Yeah, I. Uh, I just want to um, reiterate the uh, you know the urgency for this and the need to do it. Um, I know um, we've all received fines. I think the village of Florida has probably received the uh, the most fines so far, and uh, they are you know certainly willing and uh, ready to uh, sign the agreement and move forward with this. Um, you know, as Mr. Benton said, this is something we have to do. So uh, let's uh, move forward and get it done. Thank you. Okay, Legislator Burke. Very pleased to hear that the village is willing to take their responsibility for one third. And I just had a question for council. You said that uh, with the language 
put forth by the DEC, do you feel that if legal action were to be taken, that that would decide the matter in our favor? I mean, I know you don't, nobody's got a crystal ball, but do you think that's uh, strong enough language? I mean, I understand we could back it up with sales tax, but if we're talking about a million dollars, you know, with these municipalities, uh, it could take some time to get a million dollars together. I mean, I'd rather have it all cleared up before it gets to threats. Well, it does say jointly and severally. So bottom line is the project has to be done. Um, how we go about recouping the monies is, is something we have to either uh, withdraw, you know, take the monies out of their sales tax distributions or, uh, you know, court intervention. Uh, that can take a life onto its own. Nothing is guaranteed when you go to court, but uh, we have the DEC order behind us. Um, so I believe that gives us a, a, a great case to go into court. So the, the DEC language, does it specify? I know we're all jointly and severally liable, but is it your legal opinion that that, that would be a firm <laughs> commitment for a three-way split? Or in other words, I mean, it could be the DEC doesn't really care. DEC knows that we have any, with the county on the hook, the county's ready to go forward. I would they, say we have a great case. Uh, you never know what courts do, but uh, I believe we'd have a very good case before the court. Wish it had been signed before it got to this level. County Exec, you want to say a few words? Just, Mr. Chairman, and the legislature. When this was started, Ed Diana was the county executive, I was the supervisor in Chester. Because Orange County was the big government entity, they kind of steered the way this went. We were all on the hook from the DEC, the three municipalities, and some of the costs that were incurred initially, the engineering and things like that, are going to be recouped one-third. And I have no doubt in my mind that the Village of Florida and the Town of Chester are going to pay. They needed to wait for this DEC approval to come down. I contacted the Village of Chester last night. They have a meeting next Wednesday. They said, done. We, you want us to pass this, we will. But in those meetings were the county executive and the county attorney at the time, the mayor of Florida and their, his attorney, the town of Chester and our attorney at the time. And I, I can assure you, now that we're moving forward on this, and again, I agree with like what Dennis and everybody else is saying, if we needed to, we do that. But I, would, I, I have full faith in those two municipalities that they are going to pay, and I think both councils reflect that too. So your concerns are, are well worded. But I believe, based on having those discussions back then when it was first brought up to us and the municipalities were on the hook, that was the agreement because borrowing a million dollars for a dam for the village of Florida and the town of Chester is significantly more of an impact than, a, than Orange County, just the, the size of the government. So that's just telling you some insight of what was happening back then and where we are today. Thank you. I think that clears it up. Okay, are we ready for roll call? Okay, Legislator Sullivan. Question, just a question. Um, can somebody tell me why a contract hasn't been drawn up? Find it. Already? Yes, yeah, right. Okay. Well, it's been drawn up, but the bottom line is the DEC has yet to get final approval to all the plans. I wouldn't recommend that we sign an IMA. Let's say the DEC refuses to approve the plans, then we think they're reasonable. Let's say they insist we do something else. We want to reserve all rights. I don't necessarily want to sign an IMA saying we agree to do all these things until we get the DEC's approval of exactly what the dam is. We expect them to approve it. They all but approved it in a submission we made last year. They had some tweaks. We resubmitted to address the tweaks. We get the final approval from them. We'll sign the IMA. I don't think there's any issue with it, but. You would never recommend to a client, at least I wouldn't recommend to a client, that you sign a final IMA until you get a final plan in place. And the final plan is in place until the DEC gives a final approval. Okay. You ready for roll call? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ikes? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Yes. Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? DeSalvo? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Simmons, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vero, Wong, Brescia. 20 ayes. Okay, resolution number 14. Legislators Kulisek and Vero, resolution of the Orange County Legislature giving notice of intent to assume lead agency status 
under State Environmental Quality Review Act seeker with respect to the Orange County Runway 3-21 RSA Improvement Project and Goshen Wetland Mitigation Site and recommending this project to be a type one action. You want a second, Sean? Oh, Paul, okay, because John's probably on it. Okay, discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? No. Bent? I'm sorry, Anagnostakis, that's a no. no. Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? DeSalvo? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? Paduk? Ruskevich? Simmons? Sullivan, Turnbull, Vero, Wong, Russia. 19 ayes, one no. Okay, resolution number 15. Legislators Amo, Ruskevich, and Ekis. Resolution reappointing members to the Board of Health of Orange County Health District pursuant to sections 343 and 344 of the Public Health Law and section 7.04 of the Orange County Administrative Code. Second. Discussion? Yes, uh, Minority Leader Ekis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just wanted to uh, indicate that uh, I'm uh, very familiar with Dr. Mishra and, uh, and that they, uh, he and his wife, uh, have saved many lives in our <coughs> county. And the fact that he is willing to serve on this board, we should consider ourselves extremely lucky. So I hope we're unanimous on this. I know Mr. Hayes, and he is a very qualified individual in emergency management. Okay, roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? DeSalvo? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? Paduk? Ruskevich? Simmons? Sullivan? Turnbull? Biro? Wong? Brescia? 20 eyes. Okay, resolution 16. <coughs> Legislators Ruskevich and Bureau. Resolution authorizing the county executive to accept 12 Dell Venue 11 Pro 5130 tablets and software on behalf of the Orange County Department of Health pursuant to section 215 of the county law. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, DeSalvo, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Simmons, Sullivan, Turnbull, Biro, Wong, and Brescia. 20 ayes. Resolution 17. Oh, collectively. 17. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm asleep at the switch here again. Okay. So which ones it is it? It's 17, 18, 19 collectively. At the, at the correct. Okay. Discussion? Roll call. Well, I'm sorry, Tom. Yeah, my name is Yes. Now roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? DeSalvo? Hines? Chemnins? Kulisek? Paduk? Ruskevich? Simmons? Sullivan? Turnbull? Vera Wong? And Brescia? 20 eyes. Okay, resolution 20. Legislators Benton, DeSalvo, and Simmons. An act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to create three probation assistance positions at the Orange County Department of Probation pursuant to section 2.02i of the Orange County Charter. Discussion? Uh, Matt. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm going to vote yes for this today, but I'm I continue to hear uh, rather disturbing things about uh, how these $30 fees are being assessed. Now, uh, you know, maybe it's not true. I'm going to talk to Mr. Miller and see what he has to say about it. But my complaint uh, previously has been that there is very little supervision. The $30 fee is collected. They come into probation, pay their fee, and off they go without any contact with a probation officer. Uh, now what I'm hearing is uh, just mail your check in. Um, you don't have to come in, just mail in the check. So I'm finding this like, what are we paying for? What are these uh, probation officers for? 
And I think this supervisory aspect of probation is extremely important. Um, so I'll be talking to Mr. Miller about it. I'll support this today, but I'm, I have concerns. Okay, let's say your sentence. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is the same type of unfounded accusations that were brought up the last time when we had a committee meeting and we actually brought in Mr. Miller. He told us that they, uh, they, that they were allegations and that they were unfounded. And very truthfully, I have to say, I don't think this is the point, point to bring this up here. You want to bring it up at a committee meeting and have the man there and have him give him a chance to go ahead and answer these allegations, but to put him on the legislative floor at this time, I think is wrong. Legislator Turnbull? Yeah, not to go back and forth on this, Mr. Simmons, but Mr. Miller told me that what I uh, had claimed is true that probationers come into the department, people on probation come in, and they do not always see a probation officer. So I'm framing this the correct way. I'm a legislator, I have concerns, and this is very important to me. I think it's very important to the people of Orange County. Thank you. Okay, we'll bring it up at committee. Legislator Hines. Yeah, we had uh, Mr. Miller, and I think it was two months ago, to go over this uh, with us. And uh, what he said was, if probationers don't give their job, their source of income, they then are called in to explain what their situation is because they don't want to fill out the forms as to what they're doing. That's when they have to come in and mail their checks in or whatever the case may be. But this is a move in the right direction. This legislature took money out of the sheriff's budget uh, for overtime, moved it over here because we saw a need in probation. And enhancing probation hopefully will stop people from being put back into jail where it costs us even more money. But uh, Mr. Miller created these positions that don't currently exist. Uh, they are going to run the probation DWI program, all three of these people, freeing up three senior probation officers to go back in the field and uh, hopefully make Orange County a little bit safer. So this is a good thing, no matter how uh, it needs to be. On. But as Chairman of Public Safety, if Mr. Miller needs to come back in and answer more questions, I'm happy to ask him. He's always been happy to answer anybody's questions. If you ask him a question, he'll give you a three-hour answer or a ten-minute answer, whichever you prefer, because he is a wealth of knowledge and he's an asset to uh, Orange County. I just wanted to clear that up. How true. How true. Okay. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Pekus? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney, DeSalvo, Hines, <laughs> Chemnitz, Kulisek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Simmons, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vero, Wong, Russia. 20 ayes. Okay, resolution 21. Chairman Russia. Resolution appointing members of Labor Relations Advisory Committee pursuant to Article 4, Section G of the Legislative Manual. Second. Discussion. Bonasek? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? DeSalvo? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? Paduk? Ruskevich? Simmons? Sullivan? Turnbull? Vero? Wong? Brescia? 20 ayes. Okay, resolution number 22. Chairman Brescia, resolution appointing members of the Orange County Economic Development Gaming Committee pursuant to Article 4, Section G of the Legislative Manual. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? DeSalvo? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? Paduk? Ruskevich? Simmons? Sullivan? Turnbull? Vero? Wong? Brescia? 20 ayes, Mr. Chairman, and the desk is clear. Okay, public participation, Gerald and Jacobowitz regarding the county exec's veto. For Chief Bob. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And by the way, Steve, your comments about Charlie Wallace on Channel 6 were very appropriate, and I'm sure the family appreciates all your good words. 
Uh, I'm here in connection with an item on your agenda that was communication B, uh, which is uh, a response to you from the county executive that uh, he has vetoed uh, the local law uh, uh, for 2014 dealing with the county government center. I understand I have three minutes and I'll try to honor that. Uh, the county's financial uh, condition is uppermost in the minds of all of you. Uh, that's a very important item. It's been made very clear to the public. And um, <clears throat> uh, you're confronted with the dilemma of how do you deal with the county government center in the face of conflicting suggestions. Uh, the way that you would normally go about your business is that you would do an analysis of all the possible choices and the analyses would then be discussed and debated and then you would come to a decision. Uh, you did that in February of 2013 when you adopted the resolution. However, things change. Uh, nothing is uh, for sure in life and uh, things have changed and there is more information and that uh, I think the public expects that you're all going to give uh, attention to those things. You can't do that if you don't override the, the county executive's veto. Uh, because that legislation gave you the opportunity and the county the opportunity to sit down and discuss many of the issues that you've heard about in the newspapers, received emails about, and uh, uh, are being uh, deluged with from various sources. Um, I have uh, put together something that I think is relevant for your consideration, and it deals with money. And uh, the conclusion that I've reached is using the local finance law, the, the resolution you adopted for this uh, county uh, office building, and the county's debt schedule. Uh, so I'd like to just give you the highlights of that, and with your permission, we've reduced it on one sheet if we could uh, hand that up so that all the members could get that, that would be appreciated. Is that, is that okay? Okay. Um, Gary will give it to whomever you want. The sheet that you're getting has more on it than here. What's on the sheet is the analysis that gets you to this set of conclusions. And this set of conclusions is that the two building plan creates less debt by $27 million. There's a smaller annual principal payment to service the debt by $1,393,333. You'll pay less interest of $6,600,000, even though the bond issue can be 30 years, not 25. You're a 25 issue because you're doing a renovation. If it's a new building, it's 30 years. So even using the 30 year spread out, your interest will be $660,000 less. And therefore, combining the uh, debt and the interest compared to the BB plan, you're going to have a smaller debt responsibility going forward of 33 million Six hundred thousand. Jerry, dollars. please sum it up. Good. It's three minutes. We got ten speakers. So. I appreciate it. I think that's the point that I want to make. Which, if you don't override the veto, you'll have no opportunity to explore, to discuss, and probe to prove Jerry Jacobowitz was wrong. So, that alone should be an inducement for you to override the veto. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Okay, Robert and Anders Warwick. On the government center. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. Twenty years ago, I moved to Warwick. And 20 years ago, I created the first graduate program in the United States titled Design Management at Pratt Institute. 
His purpose was to teach architects and designers about management and leadership. A leader is someone who listens to differing ideas, is flexible, and is willing to change course and accept a better idea when it comes along. Each of you is an elected leader, asked to represent your constituents on local issues that arise before this government legislature. And now, because of the Paul Rudolph Design Government Center, you have been pushed beyond the borders of Orange County and thrust into a national spotlight and asked to make a decision that will be watched well beyond our county borders to a national and perhaps even an international level. Each of you has an opportunity to provide leadership and you can either make history or destroy history. You can make history by being a leader in voting for the Kaufman proposal to repurpose the Rudolph Building and get two buildings instead of one for millions less, receive five million dollars, add a major building to the tax rolls, and get a new government building designed from scratch instead of a hacked up addition. Or you can destroy history by rejecting the Kaufman proposal, allowing the CPL plans to proceed butchering what part of the Rudolph building is not destroyed, overspend by millions, have my $5 million less in your bank account, and not increase the tax rolls. What will you do? If you proceed to destroy what the New York Times architectural critic Michael Kimmelman referred to as an architectural bastard's work, your actions will not only be deemed as fiscally irresponsible, naive, and a major cultural loss not only to Orange County, but to New York State and the nation. Mr. Kimmelman ended his recent article by stating, quote, history is on the government side too. His hoping county legislators are, end of quote. As an Orange County taxpayer, I hope that you can truly act as leaders and not followers by not squandering my tax dollars, and I respectfully ask that you vote for the Kaufman proposal. It's the only one that makes fiscal, cultural, and historic sense. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you for allowing me to give you some information which you may or might not have already gotten. The, um, most of you know me because I've lived in this area for over 40 years and I've practiced architecture in this area. And I know what the costs are. I've done buildings that have been of greater value in terms of dollars than what we're looking at at the moment. The cost that you're being given by the CPL group is considerably more than we should be paying as Orange County citizens. The when I say more, I am saying it is, and I can prove my figures if anybody w wishes to consult with me at any time. I know that you're, you're taking a lot of what I'm saying uh, for granted at the moment, but I have the calculations and I have the figures and there is so much profit in the CPL package that if in fact they go ahead and do this project, I, pro I plan to propose that the newspapers see, and this is not meant as a threat, but nobody has asked for the proof of why we are paying as much. I have the proof. We have an opportunity to go with a less expensive option at this moment. And the only way we can do it is to go with the plan that's being offered. 
if 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 the the plan that's being offered by Kaufman is absolutely dollar wise a tremendous saving for the Orange County taxpayers. And if we're going to move forward and say let's override new houses veto then let's leave that option to say at the same time let's go with the Kaufman plan because the other option was even a greater expense than CPL is offering we would be going from the fire into the fire into the fire would be going from the frying pan into the fire if we went with the pike proposal thank you thank you uh, Gary Schuster Gobitz and Gobitz on the government center for the veto brother everybody a <clears throat> uh, few points to make uh, the current path you're on uh, the renovation is uh, budgeted at 74 million dollars well, we know that many of you think that is too high and some of you regret voting for it. It is not too late to change direction. I think there is a consensus among you that government offices should be centralized again in Goshen on Erie Street. There's no need to argue about that. You can make a commitment to do that. There's a lot of talk about acting quickly and getting things done. But even with the renovation plan, uh, there will be no occupancy in this building for at least two years and probably longer. Leasing offices around the county is going to continue for two years. So acting fast really isn't acting that fast. <clears throat> Clark Patterson Lee also has work to do on its architectural plans, and they will not be ready for months yet. There is time to consider better options. Uh, the Kaufman plan uh, will get the courts running within a year of approvals. Construction of the historic building will bring national and perhaps international Criticism and scorn and ridicule to Orange County and uh, Ocean, and some of this has already begun. It's also apparent that although the official position of the village seems to be opposition, we know that there is uh, considerable public support in Goshen for a two-building solution, and that will probably become more evident as time goes by. Finally, the county executive has a number of RFP proposals, and we urge you to uh, ask for them. And also reauthorize a new RFP with a short timetable for return and all those bidders who have already done their work can respond to that. So we urge you to commit to a two-building solution on the Erie Street site, override the veto so you can negotiate over the Calvin plan, reauthorize a new RFP, amend and reduce the $74 million finance resolution, and uh, finally we recognize that you have worked long and hard to get where you are today but uh, something better has come along. So please uh, have an open mind and uh, do what is best for the constituents. Thank you. Howard Prater, Chicago and on the County kind of Exec's veto. I don't see Howard, is he? He's not here, Jerry? Thank you. Okay, Steve Brander, uh, County Exec's veto. heard so far about the dollars and the speed with which you could and what it would cost you. I want to talk to you from a different perspective, from a historical and preservation perspective. So I want you to please give serious consideration to the Kaplan proposal. Your vote is being looked upon from coast to coast and internationally. Please realize this is not a short over and done with vote. The implications are quite far-reaching. Sent you a quote in a photograph earlier today. That was from the Farewell to Penn Station essay by Ada Louise Huxtable, a story that gave birth to a preservation law creating a broad preservation effort for individual buildings, historic neighborhoods and districts and parks. This law was challenged and upheld in the United States Supreme Court, much to our benefit, after it was challenged regarding the destruction of Grain Central. Well, why was this done? Because the effort was meant to enrich the lives of our generation and generations to come. At the present time, you, the legislators, 
are the stewards of this building. The predecessors went through a great, bold, and costly effort to create a building that would reflect a changing and forward-looking Orange County. Bear in mind, as you vote, you have a fiduciary responsibility for their legacy. Please do not violate that responsibility by destroying what has been passed on to you for protection, not destruction. Place political pressures aside, and as an individual, vote in the best interests of Orange County, both artistically and economically. But sadly, it seems that the news of that Penn Station event so many years ago is being ignored by or didn't reach the legislators of Orange County. The decision is directly related to that event, so please consider your vote very, very carefully. Thank you. Ben Sperry, John Walker, on the veto. Good afternoon. Uh, the Office of Court Administration has been pressuring the county to move into the Division Three courtrooms. Uh, and I have to ask you, will they tolerate the delay caused by destruction of Division Two? Because destruction of Division Two will re remove most of the uh, physical plant, the heating, cooling, and whatnot. So I don't know how you could get the courts into their, uh, their rooms uh, in less than two years. The uh, Calvin plan would uh, speed that along and put them in there working in one year. One year. Now, I've spoken about the aesthetics of the building, historical pers perspective before, but the, the sheer dollar and cents aspect of this is overwhelming. $27 million less, $5 million in revenue, uh, the Rudolph building on the tax rolls, uh, lower yearly cumulative total cost, uh, lower uh, yearly interest fees and, and financing costs, uh, the possibility of increased tourism, uh, increased uh, sales tax revenues for on-site sales, uh, if, uh, for instance, an art gallery opens there. Um, that is just an overwhelming set of numbers. but. If you don't override the new house veto, you will not get a chance to excel another day to reflect on something that was said earlier. Thank you. Mr. Wickham, Howell from the Government Center. Right here. Thank you, Francis. Uh, Salvatore Labruna, Goshen on the Government Center. Thank you. My name is Salvatore Labruna. I live in the village of Goshen. Uh, I'm not an artist or an architect, I'm simply a resident of Goshen that believes the proposal for an artist studios and event space in the Orange County Government Center is a historic opportunity that should not be missed. The county's current renovation plan by the firm Clark Patterson Lee, on the other hand, represents the status quo, business as usual approach that has failed us time and time again. It also represents a classic example of an overblown government contract. I personally can't believe there's a fiscally conservative legislator in this state, let alone Orange County, that would support this kind of spending when we have a viable and more affordable alternative. I know that if I went to each of you individually and said, I know a way we could save the county $14 million, but we would require some hard work, all of you would be willing to put in the time and effort. I don't see any reason why we can't do the same collectively by taking advantage of Mr. Kaufman's proposal, which would save the county at least $14 million with the added economic benefit of an art center and a new government center building in Goshen. This legislature has now been criticized on the national stage because of the planned demolition and renovation of the government center. How can we expect to attract investment in this county when we make decisions like this? Orange County Partnership recently created a great economic development commercial to attract potential business to Orange County. But I could see investors watching it and thinking, but isn't this the county that with one decision wasted millions of taxpayer dollars, defaced a landmark, and passed on a tremendous economic opportunity? Yes, that could be us scaring away investment in Orange County. There are people who hate the government center, people who love the government center, Republicans, Democrats, business owners, art lovers, 
There are many people who support this proposal and for many different reasons. I believe it's never too late or too hard to do what is right for the people of Orange County. As the president of the Natural, National Historic Trust has stated, while this issue has been in need of a solution for several years, it is clear that two more months of study and negotiation may lead to a solution that will best serve your constituency for another 45 years. This legislature, Mr. Chairman, can be known not only for getting things done, but for doing them right. Let's get it together and make it happen. Let's sell the government center to Kaufman and build a new government center worthy of the people of Orange County right next to it. Otherwise, we're not just demolishing part of a landmark, we're demolishing the last bit of respect the people of this county have for this government. Thank you. Yeah, we're not gonna penalize you for leaving the room, so, okay. reference there. Um, I apologize. I know what it's like to get a lot of email. Really am sorry that I am so compelled at this point in, the, in this game, this four-year game, to, to get information to you that I think you need to have. Uh, and I'm not doing a very good job of it because I stay up so late trying to work with the computer. Anyway, so for that reason, I have not prepared my, my words. I'm going to read to you a few paragraphs from the articles that I've been sending you, because I'm not sure that you went all the way through them. Uh, this is from the New York Times article, Michael, Zim Michael Kimmelman, architectural critic of the Times. Orange County Gov uh, legislators should should take a look at, at Rudolph's Art and Architecture Building at Yale. I know a couple of you have been over there. I've been there. My daughter was there for three years. We know what it was like before the change. And I was astonished to see the publications of the, the renovation done by Guadalupe Siegel, the firm that Mr. Kaufman now heads up. Fantastic, you really ought to try. You, you, I know, you didn't want to go all the way over to Dartmouth, Dartmouth, Massachusetts. That was a long trip, unless you were going to the Cape. New Haven is not that far away. Get over there and see what a great job was done. Okay. It opened in 63. It was restored in several years by the firm of Goffs and Siegel. Ugly partitions, drop ceilings from the unfortunate renovation were stripped away. Years of contempt and neglect were erased. Does this sound familiar? Mm -hmm. Cramped, dark, Byzantine spaces returned to, return to how Rudolph intended them. Light filled. What happened to those clear story windows at the government center? Uh, no, I'm sorry, I'm just my light filled, exalting with serendipitous vistas. Sounds like an architect, doesn't it? And a, a communal town like connectedness. There's a syncopated flow to the building. Concrete facade, its corduroy pa pattern bush hammered by hand, looks quarried from some immense rock. They're respecting that. That, that the texture of that service. I'm sorry that, you, that the Orange County government looks so lousy now. It's because it hasn't been taken care of. It wasn't built properly to begin with. There were problems, I know, and there were leaks from the very first day. Okay. Almost miraculous, the restoration vindicates Rudolph from the loss of reputation that he's had recently. Um, I'm just gonna read another one, but never mind. I wanna get to what I wanna say. We now hear, well, what I have learned in the last week, we now hear that demolition is going to start by the end of this month. When we have no idea what 
the new building is going to look like. How can you pass on that? How can you say you want to go ahead if you don't know what you're getting? Demolition will start by removing building two from its foundation. We knew that, no surprise. But we were very surprised when my husband went to DPW yesterday to look at the RFP for demolition. And he learned that they are removing all of the walls, all of the, the roof, all of the windows, all that will be left will be the skeleton. Columns and floors, concrete. No sign of Rudolph left. Fine. You don't like Appreciate architecture. Please conclude oh. the three minutes, sorry. All right, all right. I just want to say that the Kaufman solution makes so much sense economically. It saves time, a full year for the courts, up to 18 months on the government building. And it saves money in a time when you have such a terrible deficit in the budget. How can you ignore that? Thank you for listening. Thank you. Daniel Mack, yes. Is that you, Daniel Mack? No, I'm sorry. Daniel Mack from uh, Warwick on the Government Center. Questions? I was hoping to join the list of speakers. All right, we'll grant it. Just try to sign up in time. Thank you. Hi, nice to be here. Nice to work with many of you. I've been on committees with many of you, worked on various projects. Uh, much of what I wanted to say has already been said here, and I just want to share one kind of problem-solving tool that I've run into as a businessman recently. Um, I enjoy fights with people. I enjoy calling people corrupt. I enjoy ranting at people, getting angry. Uh, that was me when I was a bit younger. Now I've learned something called the, the um, blessing of insight, where instead of sort of drawing a line between you and the other person and daring them to cross it, you uh, invite the other person into kind of a semi-religious uh, moment where you agree to suspend your, your kind of animosity with each other and look for what you have together, what you have in common. And I think uh, here you've already kind of progressed in this process. You've, there have been resolutions, there have been votes, there's, the, the, the thing is moving along. But a blessing of insight in this particular case would be a chance just to give yourselves a chance to revisit this and incorporate some of the new information. I think what Jerry was saying is, is very important. Things have changed in the last year. There's, there's a new climate. And I think as a, as a kind of a, a generosity to yourselves, uh, to the situation, and to uh, the people in Orange County, uh, I wish you a blessing of insight. State your name for the record when you come up, please. Jonathan Swiller, Highland Mills, town of Woodbury. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak. The previous speakers have spoken to the uh, value of the Rudolph building and uh, the reasons for considering the Kaufman plan. I'd like to address the objections to the Kaufman plan. Uh, first of all, I've heard that uh, some people feel that uh, the fact that he was late to the party is the problem, but we are now where we are now. Uh, I've heard that New York State would not accept a change uh, which would uh, change um, what is happening with the courts, but I'm uh, rather certain that uh, if uh, they're shown that the courts will be available sooner, that they would find that acceptable. Also, uh, that Goshen has a number of objections, or at least the, the government of Goshen does. And lastly, that $2 million has already been expended, and uh, that's, uh, see, it would be seen as lost money if you uh, made a change now. With Goshen, my understanding is that uh, the uh, 
Board of Goshen hasn't actually met with Kaufman. If that's the case, I would ask that you urge them to meet. Um, if, in fact, Kaufman can complete his work faster than the alternative, uh, complete two buildings rather than one, um, and add a building to the tax rolls, I think that it's quite possible that uh, their objections would melt away. Um, as to the two million spent, uh, if there is an overall savings of a great deal more than that, um, I, I think it would be foolish to chase after two million and ignore ten times that amount. Uh, if the um, if, in fact, it is possible that the Kaufman plan can meet these objections, can erect a suitable county building, can re rehabilitate an architecturally significant structure, create an arts center, add to the tax rolls, and save us all money, I think that it's certainly worth your effort to investigate if these things uh, can be done. Thank you. Thank you. Before we adjourn, I would, yes. This gentleman, okay, John, okay, then we're done, right? Yeah. You remember? <laughs> I remember. But you got to remember to sign up on time next time. Oh, well, I, I say I had a, uh, I have chores at home, and it's kind of hard to get down here. And I just, between the snow and home, I take care of my animals. Okay, just, the three, uh, three minutes, uh, I let it go over a little bit, but try I to keep it I don't know if minutes. any of you have read the, uh, the report from uh, La Bella Associates about the, uh, the new, uh, the, the, the present government center, which also included uh, the complete process of all the all the buildings in the, in the county, and uh, if you had read that report, you would know why you should renovate rather than rebuild. After reading the assessor report made by Labella Associates presented to the legislature in January 9, 2012, I questioned Mr. Taufman's plans for the renovation of the government center and his plans for the construction of a new government center, which includes a court court. Uh, which includes a court facility in the library uh, and a new parking facility, which I don't think anybody really knows that much about. I would like Mr. Kaufman to explain how he's going to renovate the government center into an artist studio, meeting areas and conference centers, and bring all of the facilities and lighting, electric, windows, air conditioning, elevator, which has to be made handicap accessible, 87 roofs, doing the sheets, making the building handicap accessible, and so and the, also the supporting infrastructure, plumbing, etc., on $114 million. Uh, by making minor renovations, it can't be done. Will he be able to bring the entire building up to code? And if he doesn't, how does he expect the certificate of occupancy from the building inspector if he's doing his job? I understand there could be a random problem with the construction of the new government center. This testing on the other place indicated there was an excess of rent to gas. Uh, has Mr. Kaufman looked into this possibility? There is also a problem with the wetlands. What has been done to resolve this? Because the upper north end of the property is still wetlands. How will they arrive at, uh, no, how will they arrive at 144,000 square feet for the government center when the buildings are made up of a government center, courthouse, and library? How is the space going to be allocated and to who? How will the new parking facility covered in the overall cost of how is that covered in the overall cost of sixty-six million dollars? Uh, is the mall in the center of the place? How is where is what, how is that covered? Where does that money come from? Uh, how will space be allocated for the government center? I believe that the point is no one actually knows. Have any core samplings been made because I understand building a new government center at the opposite end of the parking lot would require piles or some support for the new building. If, they, if this is true, at what cost? Has the zoning problems with the village been resolved? And if it has it, is he going? What is he going to do, do to get it accepted? If it, isn't, if it isn't accepted, has anyone looked into the zoning for the area? I feel there are numerous items that have not been discussed. For example, parking restrictions, location of parking facilities to the building entrance, landscaping, compatibility with other buildings in the area. After reading the Labella Government Center survey, it's obvious. There are numerous, problem, numerous problems with the external and the internal portions of the, of the center, and the complete renovation is the only solution short of tearing it down and building another center. 
If the building is retained by the county, it is estimated the present 144,000 square feet will be increased to 194,000 square feet and be able to house, house most of the government agencies, thus resulting in a much more efficient operation. The ultimate cost of the estimate of 74 million, which is not unreasonable when you consider all the facilities will be brought up to code and it will be a, a lot less than constructing a new government center as proposed by Mr. Kaufman. I believe his $66 million estimate for a new government center is not all inclusive and the real cost will be much more. Uh, I, anyway, I just, Almost done, John. Yeah, I, I, I think what it is, and I'm basically saying it, Kaufman's blowing smoke. I don't think he can do. I don't think he can do the renovations in his building for 14 million dollars, considering all the things that are wrong with it. I don't believe he can build a new building for 66 million dollars when he's not including other options. Uh, I think he's. He is it, I think he's. Okay. John, please. please that, that's what I'm saying. John, John, please. Okay. Okay. I think we're. This is getting carried away now. I'm, I'm not going to allow this anymore. If, if you're not signed up at the beginning, then, you know, it, it's real. I shouldn't allow it to begin with. I, you know. I'm sorry, ma'am. You have three? All right. This, you're the last speaker. That's it. Okay? Very liberal with a three-minute rule on the speakers, and it's not going to be allowed again. We've got to have some semblance here. I appreciate it, but some of us have work issues that make it very difficult to get here at 3.30 p.m. on an afternoon. Uh, perhaps if some of the meetings were held in the evening, they would be better attended. Some of us do work. Thank you. My name is Gloria Benelli, no relation. Um, I am uh, a resident of Goshen for the past eight years, resident of Orange County for over 20 years. Um, much of what I had wanted to say, which is why I held back, was addressed. However, for any of those of you, and I'm sure that probably doesn't include those of you on the dais who are not aware of a Mr. Kaufman's firm, I urge you to go online and uh, do a little Googling and look up, um, this is a very reputable firm. Uh, he has renovated at least one prior Rudolph building. Uh, he sits on the boards of many, many arts and other organizations. And I, I find it difficult uh, to imagine why anyone would call his integrity into question at this point. He has attended various meetings. He will attend meetings with anyone who asks him to. He has charts, he has figures, he has numbers. This is a professional man who uh, would not be in the position that he's in, in the profession that he's in. And um, he's highly, highly regarded. If he had not been able to back up what he presents. He's not blowing smoke anywhere. He has one up, uppermost interest in mind, and that is to save the Rudolph building. Personally, that's not my interest. When I first drove through Goshen, beautiful, stunning village, uh, when I was a visitor from New York City and I came upon the government building, I could not believe the atrocity of this building in that village. I thought it was the ugliest thing. However, you know, we all learn new things, we come to conclusions, we come to an understanding. We need, we desperately need what this Kaufman plan could bring to our community. And I urge you, I urge you to reconsider the Speedo. It's not too late. And there's nothing more that I can say that hasn't been said already. Thank you. Thank you. Let's put it in your office. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you for the way you ran the meeting today. Thank you for allowing the few extra people to speak. I think on your shoulders rests in the next 30 days where there an override veto vote will occur. I understand there may not be the votes, the 14 votes for that override, but I wanted the record to be clear because I heard many people say, how could this legislature move forward with the costliest plan available under the financial strain and situation that this county is in. And this legislature, again, I want to make it clear for the record, took a vote of 18 to 3 to move forward 
with that costliest plan, but the record needs to reflect that against that costliest plan were Mr. Simmons, Ms. Sullivan, and Mr. Anagnostakis. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before we adjourn, I would like to ask for a moment of silence, which I should have done earlier, for a Charles Wallace, who was tragically struck by a, a van um, beginning of January and passed away Tuesday night. Uh, he was a pillar of our community, commissioner of the Montgomery Fire District, and he will be sadly, sadly missed uh, throughout our community. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn.